That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, moving right along, I'd like to introduce our second reader, Tina Posner. She is a New York City native, transplanted to Austin in 2004. She earns her keep as a freelance writer of classroom materials and writes these <coughs> materials as if science, justice, and critical thinking were valuable things. She says this is why the Texas School Board is up in arms. <laughs> she lives with her sweetheart, Anthony, and a dog that means well and two cats that don't. <laughs> Tina has published poems with whimsical and frequency in places such as Haggard and Hallou, Less Review, Defenestration, and Elsewhere. In addition, she has DIY'd several chapbooks, including Na Narrative Animals and The Philip Experiment, and if you ask her, she will gladly make copies for you. Um, some standout moments in Tina's literary life include grocery shopping with Jack Clark, Horrifying Louise Gluck with Freshen Up Squirt Gum, which is a good story. <laughs> and um, getting into uh, getting a spontaneous kiss from John Giorno in a church bathroom line. <laughs> and riding in a truck with Robin Blazer. So with that, I want you to welcome, help me welcome Tina Posner. Thanks to everybody so much for coming out. Uh, thanks to uh, AR and Wade for inviting me, uh, Raw Claw people. Um, this is uh, Malvern Books. This is the most beautiful bookstore I know. Um, I'm going to read a poem that uh, I put in Narrative Animals first, and uh, it's called Comedians. It begins with a quote uh, I must confess, I'm not quite so nice to damn all little gallantries for vice. That's from The Repulse to Alcander from Sarah Fig Egerton. <clears throat> I can't remember my dreams, but they leave me bathed in sweat. Maybe the problem is I still haven't figured out how my family was replaced by three goldfish named after the Stooges. Shemp, who appears to be DOA, was unmourned. Nor do they seem to miss their jailbird daddy. But I think the fish might love me, or at least they recognize me as the food lady. They swim to my gaze in mild wet kisses. The cat is surprisingly indifferent or oblivious to these orphans. I guess peaceful coexistence is possible as long as the food lady comes through. And although the sound of the filter makes me have to pee all the time, <laughs> I guess I love them too. Partly because they were nearly flushed down the toilet by someone from social services, and partly because the algae stained tank is so hopelessly murky it's like they're swimming around in my head. But I love them most for rising again to surface to look for one last crumb of food after checking endless times. I find their optimism so touching <clears throat> and the sunlight works its alchemy on golden scales incandescence. These comedians can't resist delivering their punchlines of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that the line between the real and the surreal is easily breached by coincidence. There's a statue in Montreal of Brother Andre, and millions of people each year make a pilgrimage there for healing. I went there too, but as it turns out, as an accidental pilgrim. Another thing that you might want to know before I read this poem is that the French word chaos is pronounced like the English word cows. Uh, this poem was in uh, Haggard and Alou. It's called In Montreal. And it begins with the motto on the Quebec license plate, Je me, je me souviens. <clears throat> I've been coloring my teeth for God, whose presence is confirmed by the tunnel graffiti, some things I allay and some things I destroy. It's those dream logic moves that cause my imaginary ancestors to cluck their tongues and disapprove. They say, Suzanne, all your questions turn to sand, but that's not my name. And the sirens are constant now, like an astringent seeping into an open wound. The prediction has passed its expiration point, time to cast the moldy dish out of my old refrigerator heart. Some say the wish inside self-mutilation is surprisingly healthy, an ad hominem attack on French chaos with English cows. But cleverness won't get us very far. From here, we'll just bump along on the supplicant trail where trampled dust rains back down its tacit blessings 
from the patron saint of amputees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this poem was uh, published in an online site called Elsewhere, which is a really beautiful uh, site. I encourage you to uh, check it out. Uh, if this poem had a motto, it might be, even a paranoid clock is right twice a day. <laughs> it's called agoraphobia. <clears throat> Being scared of cereal is no way to go through life. With aspirational toilets and zombie cucumbers providing the comedic relief along the way, the serious German plumbing supplies the drama. Ennui may drive one to plan Russian high tea for preschoolers, but that's not how I ended up with boot black dripping down my face an hour before the party, my psychological twin simultaneously shaving his head across town. It's our inner Will Shatner, swaddled in a man girdle, teetering on the tightrope of self-pity parody that longs to be loved. The word itched like a dry scab, scratched off and inspected. Other sensations fit neatly in our carry-on baggage, and we will spend a lifetime folding these worn little feelings into piles we call serious and not serious. The tedious exercise takes place on an enormous expanse of dry ranch land edged in razor wire and managed for a group of investors. Rumor has it that the investors got rich allowing radioactive waste to be buried there. But the electronic spying, we are assured, is real. And that pretty much explains why. <coughs> there were uh, there were some there were some sad times in 2014, and uh, I want to read this poem uh, now from my mother-in-law who uh, died of cancer last May. At her funeral, I read a poem aloud that she had saved among her papers, uh, but this one I wrote for her on the occasion of her birthday, June 26. 2014. Today we'll celebrate with blank birthday cards and expensive flowers set on soil tilled up and turned into motherland. I wear a heavy necklace, a weight to savor above the heart, like a presence. And bracelet watch I don't need to tell me that this is the day your son has been dreading. A month ago, your sister in the bed beside you, one daughter on the floor, two nurses in the living room, your son and I like heavy stoppers at the door. It was two-ish, the kiss of night bluish, because of latitude. You made us laugh about Jaffa cakes. We cracked like high notes of a hymn and spooned together as the nurses poured out sympathy tea. The next day, sweaty and mached in the page papers you left, looking for the arrangements as you were laid in your best robe, flowers on the pillow. Teeth in, hair done, before the morphine leached you away. But arrangements were not what you made. You left us with a poem and a naughty photo. <laughs> done up in a black corset, like a kitten with a whip. <laughs> Twelve hours later, the sun said, hurry, call the undertaker, any undertaker. The street turned its back tactfully as you left us a third time. You can dance now, knees up, mother, bingo addict bus clippy, factory worker, motherless child. You told him not to cry the way you met your grim prognosis. There's too much butter on the toast. From the window here, no view of cracked Spanish tile shaded with coal smoke that once baptized the whole town charcoal gray. Your humor, dark, funny buggers they. The cheeky parrots tearing small holes through our grief when they say, Claire, Feed Jake, he's fucking starving. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about 2014 was uh, taking a workshop with Hua Wen. Um, that's H-O-A-N-G-U-Y-E-N. -E uh, look her up on uh, Facebook, and uh, I encourage you to sign up for uh, her workshops. I think a new one is starting. This poem came out of a workshop I did with her on James Schuyler and it's called Moaning Low after James Schuyler. Libby sings in black fringe among the fairy lights. He's the kind of man who's not kind to the kind of woman who's loose like cinnamon. A song with a trill and a squawk, a kiss and a smack, 
No one wants another incident where you're like the schlub covered in sweet syrup in the bathroom stall. He's the kind of man who might bite you on the ass as you lean across the table as if your hind cheek were an apple, and he leaves the kind of woman who would giggle at that. He's the kind of man who would drag his old left hand through the ink while he drinks. You sure are funny, funny looking, and I don't think this conversation is worth overhearing anymore. Let's take this junk on the road in a baggie, let the sugar slowly explode into blooms of rust. James, I'm so happy you have a new sweetie, but I fear it won't last past the lust. He's the kind of man who leaves the kind of man who gets up first to make the coffee because he cannot see that he is also beautiful when he sleeps, so he weeps. The conversations break apart as they float away from their individual islands, forming a beautiful mosaic of trash in the air. Some people remember big dogs. Some people leave a lot of white space. I like slipping rhythmically from side to side, a bit off center, with a nodding head, full of fragments that make sense at the time, like when you're high. <laughs> my skin knows where the shade ends. My nose can pick out sour pickles. James can find the beauty in an old flapper with her March-like beaded bag, singing her song with lilts and braise in a nightclub heaven that floats on clouds of tobacco smoke compressed within a small space. Forget him, James. He's the kind of man, like the old dog you once had, who smelled of rotting candy when you pressed fur to face, the kind that sometimes needs his anal glands expressed. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> this is another poem uh, from the Schuyler days, and uh, it's for Antony, who is traveling uh, back home to England quite a bit last year. It's called Two Weeks. Time folds around an absence, an indent a body makes in the mattress, back filled with pets and extra pillows, an interregnum in our bed. The quiet will not break as I pull curtains, heat water, the spoon clinks on porcelain, <laughs> The tea drops splotch until I speak, greeting the dog, greeting the cats with breakfast. Their response, a chorus of greedy kibble crunch. My own needs have shrunk to a dense piece of cornbread for breakfast, leftovers for lunch, with cookies dunked in tea for dinner again. The refrigerator says, I feel empty inside. <laughs> I'm using up a lot of spoons trying to warm this weak cocoon with warm cocoa, more tea, the week drags its days up the stairs in heavy grocery bags, reaching another landing, still not there. The long fast of alone time is nearly over now. An early star is winking. Pisces, enjoy the moment when it comes to love. I want to feed you low down on the pyramid of human need, so something will be waiting. It won't be black lace. It will have black lentils as a base. A potato pillow top of buttery mash, Carrots cut like baby teeth, the rattle of frozen peas, an onion stinging in the oil, a poultice of rosemary and thyme, with mushrooms for a mommy to say that you're my baby. <laughs> I'm ashamed now to say that my heart had closed with the door behind you, a flinch acquired like a taste for bitters. How would it feel if you never came back to me, the numbness creeping up past my knees, breath passive like a possum? I tell myself it wouldn't matter, that in fact it might be better, yeah, better. If I were left here alone, the house finally neat, hours seeping in a private neap tide. But that's all a lie, isn't it? I'm scurrying around the kitchen, checking timers, checking flight status, refusing to acknowledge the flutters. Damn, I wish I had boiled more than two pounds of potatoes. The Parmesan cheese will have to fill space with flavor, adding a bite of brown crust to smallish peaks. What a relief. I can switch off the heat. The food can wait warm and snug in the oven. Should I take the dog? No, the dog is too sticky. Should I leave before the runway taxi call? No matter now. It's all ringing. The timer, the phone, time to bring you back home. <laughs> Um, after we uh, finished the Schuyler uh, workshop, we, uh, some of us moved on to form our own uh, Muriel Rookheiser group. 
and uh, this, uh, this comes from uh, the Rookeyser days. It's called the cardboard pool. We spoke of building a cardboard pool, one that floats in the air above the snakes, not cut into the ground with life-size tonkas. The sails overhead create leafless shade, the plantings and water fleas clear algae. But overhead, the sails lift the dream, cutting into the air with a sharp keel, a bruising tool. The water, a sea green, cools the skin, not the hot agave green that bleeds, its thorn, a tearing horn, and the dream puncture, leaking from its makeshift cardboard seams. What was I thinking? Let's be grateful for the dry weeds. Believe that we are living life as if awake, not paralyzed and imagining. Nests of pet hair catch in spider webs and fill the corners. Grape vines and roses arm wrestle around the circle fence. To the east, the deep end of night pools. It's where we sing songs for England and drown our losses. The setting sun sets some flies on fire, and I am married to their minor. This is the last poem I'll read, and uh, it was also uh, written under the spell of Rukeyser, but with an insomnia hangover. <laughs> the night before, I was up uh, watching Hustle and Flow uh, again <laughs> on my cable. And uh, I had just started to uh, write a series of hip-hop biographies at the time, so uh, Puff Daddy snuck in there too. <laughs> it's called May. <laughs> the word man comes out like the word May. I can't get this out of my head. All day, I say May to the cat, May to the dog. You're in charge, you hear me? You're in charge. That pimp voice gets under my skin. It's easy at night. It's quiet. The TV flickers and my pores are open to stories like dreams or fireworks that light up thoughts for a little while and fade. But this one word, a bit of language, sticks between my teeth and won't go. I can't stop saying, may this and may that. Maybe I had a silent G. Maybe there was a dropped N. I keep playing with the sound, rolling it around into the next day. Considering the split between upright and depraved, I imagine a young boy who plays records all day while his daddy is betrayed by a murderous rival, the waste. There was a toughness in the past that's missing in the gloss of these days. We weren't meant to be saints. The natural hair, the high socks, fallen blocks, open hydrants, smoky haze. Now that we found love, what are we going to do? It's a good question, May. <laughs> Stories often use love as punctuation. We can sweat the next sentence or play where it lays. <laughs>